Hi there, Henry from Nonland Virgin, the Porsche Pavilion Lux Beach. Welcome to another video. Got a question for you. Would you rather have a Ford Focus or a Porsche 911? Think about it. Now, Ford Focus, it's an ST, not the real ST. You got the real ST's 35,000 pounds. It's a Ford Focus ST, one litre, Eco Sport. I'm going to say 124 horsepower. It's got side steps, it's got over mats, and I'll even throw in metallic paint. So, would you like that or a Porsche 911? Hmm. I also would go for the Porsche 911. The reason I asked the question, and the reason I was incredibly specific in terms of which Ford Focus it was, is because we sold a car at the weekend and we sold it for 25,000 pounds. So I went on Google and I tried to find a Ford Focus that was 25,000 pounds. And this Ford Focus ST line, one liter eco power thing is 25,580 pounds, give or take. So it's actually 580 quid more than the Porsche 911 we sold. Now, I also, I know you're a very suspicious lot and you're thinking, oh yeah, but it'd be some skanky old 1977 Sportomatic 2.7 rotten as a pear smokes like a chimney no it's not an old car at all I mean an old car like this would be very expensive you'd need quite a few Ford Focus STs for it but it would actually be this this is a 2005 997 C2S coupe we sold this this weekend for 25,000 pounds so would you rather have this or the Ford Focus obviously you'd want this and I just uh, you see a lot of videos on YouTube and people kind of say oh well you know a supercar for the price of a family hack or whatever um, so what's the kind of reality um, with something like this as opposed to a more normal spend, if you will, of your, your £25,000? It's a it's 2005 car. I mean, there's, there's a few caveats with this. Um, I think it's fair to say that sort of most 2005 997s are, they, they've probably got a few issues. Um, we love stuff like this. I mean, you know, if you want to sell a, a really lovely 997, for goodness sake, get in touch with us. Because if it's a lovely car, we're a, we're a strong buyer of them. Um, the problem is that there are car. Th this is kind of the, the first of, of the almost current era of, of Porsches. Maybe I should kind of explain a bit where a 997 fits within the lineup. So if you see kind of 3.2 Carrera and backwards as, you know, something like this. That's the, the, the classic 911. 964 came out in the late 80s, early 90s. That was then a more modern platform uh, on which the, you know, the car's kind of handled, had ABS brakes and so on. Then the 993 came out, all hail to the magnificent 993, which shall never be spoken bad of. And that, to many people, was kind of the pinnacle of Porsche 911 development, air-cooled, um, and look really nice. Then the 996 came out, and the 996 I'm kind of seeing as maybe the first of the of the kind of current era of, of, of Porsches, maybe. Um, bit flat on the sides, headlights changed a bit, and there was a bit of a reaction against the 996 because it was a water-cooled, first water-cooled car. Then the 997 came out, this car came out in 2004, and all of a sudden, people started feeling the love. It kind of looks a little bit like a 993, all hail to the magnificent 993 that one should never criticize. Um, and so, you know, headlights are like, it's got a bit of slight shape to the quarters and so on. Uh, and then after this, you had the, the uh, 991 and then the current 992. So this is, as I say, ran from 2004 through to 2011, I think the 997 finished. 12, actually, I think it was. Yes, 991 came out in 2012. Um, 
and so it, you know a fairly long span and these were and actually still are everyday usable cars you could buy this car and genuinely use it every day because of that finding good ones is quite hard you tend to find there's sort of three areas where they'll let themselves down uh, visually which is probably the easiest thing to see they'll just look tired on the paint um, you know blemishes inside will look tired and then mechanically they'll be tired and they'll need want work doing to them um, the body wise you know you can actually quite easily respray a car it's got a cost associated with it in crude terms you know it's five grand to respray a car and make it look pretty again the interior is probably a bit harder once they're tired inside there's not really that much you can do they are then falling into that kind of old tired car uh, mechanically kind of depends what's wrong with them um, most of the 997s that we see could probably do with between maybe a thousand and five thousand pounds spent on them um, there's a few kind of common jobs that you tend to find um, coolant pipes both the coolant pipes in the front end I actually made a video showing um, the uh, coolant pipes and then there's two crossover aluminium crossover pipes that go on the front end um, and where the rubber goes into the aluminium part they kind of fuse and you've basically got to change the whole lot you've also got a similar thing happening in the back uh, there's a coolant pipe which goes across the top of the engine and so you have to change the, the, the pipes to the rear as well um, you can have kind of suspension issues um, brakes um, you can have potentially kind of clutches rear main seals potentially IMS bearings I've got to say actually on these cars IMS bearings are, are very very in our opinion rare occurrence in terms of issues um, you know maybe kind of one percent problems I don't think we've ever actually changed an RMS bearing uh, on one of these um, and often when you change the clutch and you're doing the rear main seal uh, you can also then have a little look at the IMS bearing and if it was in need of changing you could change it so wouldn't get too upset about those um, but oh uh, air conditioning uh, radiators or oh, air conditioning condensers and radiators again that's another fairly common uh, thing we come across so you know there's potentially three to five thousand pounds worth of work which is all doable but obviously it has a cost associated with it and so a lot of the cars that you see advertised they might be shiny but they need a fair chunk of money spent on them and the problem is if we look at a car and it's a bit tired body wise it wants some mechanicals doing and you think well there's 10 grand to spend on it someone's just going to advertise it you know this made 25 they'll stick it up for 20 21 22 even 23 thousand pounds you think it's a bit cheaper but there's quite a lot of money to spend on it and so um, you know you need to be very careful about buying it and that's the the downside I guess you know my kind of thing about the, the Ford Focus you can go to your Ford dealership it's a brand new car it comes with a guarantee there's, there's no risk with it obviously with with older cars um, there is a, a risk associated with buying them so I think you have to be more careful when you're making a purchase of, of something like this um, on the plus side your Ford Focus is not going to be 25,000 pounds for very long it's going to go down fairly quickly whereas something like this will you know retain most of its probably all its value you know long term moving forwards you don't really get much by way of 911s for under 20,000 pounds you know if you're spending less than 20 grand on a 911 you really are kind of throwing caution to the wind and, and, and buying what may turn out to be a kind of costly project so you know I, I would say if someone came to me and said how much I've got to spend on a, a 911 I'd say at the moment you know minimum 20,000 pound and, and upwards so you know it's quite close to that that kind of floor level so what's it like actually driving these um, they're actually a really nice car and funny the, 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 
the 997s um, came in what they call a Gen 1 and a Gen 2. So the, the early cars up to 2009 model um, were Gen 1s and then the Gen 2s were uh, 2009 models until they finished in 2012. Um, the Gen 2s are kind of very desirable. I mean, they, they've really become quite a collector's car and some of the specialists, if you look at things like a GTS, um, you know, they really are commanding pretty huge money and there's a, there's a, there's a very strong uh, demand for them and they weren't built in particularly big numbers because if you, have, if you think back to kind of 2008, 2009, we had a world recession so people weren't rushing out and buying cars so there's not many of them. There are more of these, these Gen 1 cars and so prices are a bit more affordable um, and therefore they make quite an attractive uh, prospect in terms of buying them. The, the, these cars, um, I like these. I, I, you know, this car to drive, um, it's got a nice gearbox in it. It feels a nice, sharp car to drive. It's, you know, a very, very modern car. You're not sort of sitting in the inside lane. You, you don't have to be conscious of the fact that you're driving an older car. You know, it is literally, it's everyday usable. Um, and, and it feels a, a kind of modern car. Things like the switchable sports exhaust on these, these Gen 1 cars, they're a, a nice thing to have um, in that it, you know, it gives it a kind of fairly throaty feeling when it's driving along. Funnily enough, the Gen 2 cars, um, the switchable sports exhaust didn't make quite as much difference. It, it, it's, it's a bit of a sort of non-event um, unless you go for the X51, which is the, the power uh, upgrade, but then you're suddenly starting to talk you know, huge money to get a Gen 2 997 with X51 and, and the bits on it. So, um, but yeah, in terms of, of, of driving, um, you know, it, it feels a, a kind of quite a compact car um, and you're not having to allow it its age particularly if you get a well-sorted car like this. This particular car has done 107,000 miles. So, you know, they are used, you know, if you think about it, it's whatever it is, uh, 17 years old. So in terms of, you know, average mileage, it's actually technically below average, but you know, it's fared very, very well for a car that's been used. And th th there's also a bit of a misnomer in terms of kind of mile mileage and wear. You know, people say, oh, a clutch lasts 60,000 miles or, a, you know, brakes last 30,000 miles. Or there's actually no correlation whatsoever between mileage and wear on a car. If you sit on the motorway, you do lots of miles for nowhere. If you sit in town, you do very few miles for lots of wear, you know, lots of journeys, getting in, getting out. So um, it's actually kind of how many hours they've run and how many journeys they've done, which would be the cumulative effect of, of, of wear on a car. Um, so we, you know, the, the number on the speedo will dictate kind of the most you can ask for a car, but the condition of the car, the, the value up to that point, theoretically. Um, but yeah, it's it's just, you know, we, this for us, as I say, you know, we love 997s. I think they're a, a, a kind of great car. And I quite like the fact that um, it's a car you can sell. Affordable is a, is, I've said this before in some of the videos, it's a really hard thing because, you know, to somebody, 250,000 pounds is affordable. To, to somebody, 5,000 pounds is not affordable. But, but I think a 997 within Porsche 911 terms is, is quite an affordable car um, in terms of the purchase price, providing you get a, a good car for your money. Keeping it on the road, um, you're probably going to have to allow a couple of thousand pound a year to keep it serviced and, and do all the bits and pieces. Um, and, you know, with older cars, there is the, the possibility of sort of bigger builds every now and again. Um, but again, seen over a, I don't know, five year ownership period, I think they would potentially sort of even themselves out a little bit. So a, a bit of a, a snapshot of the, uh, the 997 there, which, you know, I hope you found useful and a fun thing to, you know, think about. Do you buy a Ford Focus or do you treat yourself to a, a Porsche 911? It is worth emphasizing that, you know, being an older car, there is more that can go wrong. Um, obviously, one of the benefits of buying off us is the assurance that comes with the car, both in that, you know, what we've actually are selling, having checked it through, and then 
you know, us standing with you moving forwards, you know, having bought the car in terms of guarantees and, and warranties and so on. Um, and that's something which, you know, you're not always going to find, certainly buying privately, um, you know, you kind of take your life in your hand and, and, you know, other sources will come with varying degrees of, of, of warranty and assurance and so on. Um, if you are looking to sell a, well, any Porsche, but certainly, you know, a 997, you know, we're very strong buyers um, of cars and we, and we, you know, because we're looking at the cars before we buy them, um, you know, we appreciate the difference between good, bad and indifferent. So, you know, if you've got a really, really fine example, we'll appreciate that and, and reflect that in, uh, you know, how we move forward. We'll either buy outright um, or we're happy to sell on your behalf. Um, and that way, you know, you use our platform to make sure that your car achieves its its full retail potential and you're not having to take a sort of, uh, you know, an auction type bid or a private sale bid um, where the buyer is potentially nervous because to be fair, they get no protection themselves. So, you know, they're gonna be cautious with what they'll potentially pay for a car. So anyway, I hope you found it useful. Don't forget if you want to subscribe to our video channel then every time new videos come out, you'll hear about them. Uh, and in the meantime, enjoy the sunshine, enjoy the summer, get out in your Porsches and have some fun. I'm Henry, we're 911 Virgin, goodbye. Mm -hmm.